Hi, welcome to another video. So, we have a bit of a showdown today. If you have been following the channel recently, you know I have been testing a lot of models. We had the release of GLM 4.7, which I called the best open model yet, by a long shot. But almost at the same time, we saw Minimax update their line with the M2.1, which is a budget beast. Now, a lot of you have been asking me in the comments, which one should I actually use? Or is the price difference worth the performance gap? It is a valid question, because both of these models are targeting that sweet spot of high performance and low cost, but they go about it in very different ways. I have been running them side by side on my benchmarks, throwing everything from basic logic puzzles to full-stack agentic coding tasks at them. And honestly, the results are kind of fascinating. First, let's talk about availability and the price tag, because this is usually the deciding factor for a lot of developers. On one hand, you have GLM 4.7. This is an open weights model. That means you aren't locked into one provider. You can run it through ZAI where the pricing is insanely cheap, starting at around $3 for a quarterly plan. Or you can use other inference providers. Because the weights are open, you have that freedom. On the other hand, we have Minimax M2.1. This thing is priced aggressively. We are talking about $1.20 per million output tokens and $0.30 per million input tokens. To put that in perspective, that is roughly two times cheaper than Gemini Flash on paper. So, if you are building an agent that loops thousands of times, Minimax looks very attractive. But does it actually hold up against the raw power of GLM 4.7? Let's get into the benchmarks. I'm going to break this down into visuals, logic, and then the big one, coding and agents. Starting with the visual tests. This is where AI models usually hallucinate wildly, but both of these are surprisingly competent. I asked both of them to generate a 3JS Pokeball. Minimax M2.1 scored a perfect 20 out of 20 here. It was actually insane. The dimensions were perfect, the lighting was slick, it just worked out of the box. GLM 4.7 was also really good at this. It reflects light correctly. The geometry is solid, but the differences start to show up when we get to the chessboard test. I asked them to create a chessboard with an autoplay feature. GLM 4.7 nailed this. It is the best generation I have seen in a while. The board colors were slick. It didn't use emojis for pieces, and the autoplay actually made legal moves. This is kind of awesome. Minimax, however, failed this test. I tried it multiple times, but the functionality just wouldn't click. So, round one for complex interactive visuals goes to GLM. Now, let's move to the main event, the coding and agentic workflows. I always use the Movie Tracker app as my standard benchmark. It's a great test because it requires fetching data from an API, TMDB, rendering a UI, and handling routing. I went into Kylo code and asked GLM 4.7 to build this using Expo. Now, watch what happens. It generates the file structure. It sets up the API calls. In literal seconds, we have a home page with a carousel of movies. But it doesn't just stop there. When I clicked on a movie, it opened up a detailed inner page with the plot, casting, and ratings. It looked insanely nice to work with. It was a complete, polished, one-shot generation. Then, I threw the exact same prompt at Minimax M2.1 using Claude code. It started off strong. It built the home page, the search functionality worked, and the layout was decent. However, here is where it gets interesting, or rather, where it falls apart a bit. When I tried to click into the inner pages to see movie details, 
it didn't really work. The routing or the data passing was broken. It is a solid attempt for such a cheap model, but it didn't have that finish line polish that GLM 4.7 had. We saw a similar pattern with the Svelte Kanban app test. GLM 4.7 isn't perfect here. It made some rookie syntax mistakes in Svelte. However, it managed to build a working login page, and the design was way better than most other models. It sits comfortably in the middle of the pack. Minimax, when asked to build complex apps like Atari or Nuxt application, basically failed. It just couldn't handle the complexity of those frameworks yet. But I have to give credit where credit is due. Minimax M2.1 absolutely shines in specific, self-contained tasks. I asked both models to build a GoTUI calculator using the Bubble T library. Minimax nailed it. It did it in one shot, the colors were great, and it worked perfectly. GLM 4.7 also did this insanely well. So for these types of script-based tasks, the cheaper Minimax model is actually punching way above its weight class. In fact, on my agentic leaderboard, GLM 4.7 scores the fifth position. This puts it in the elite tier, making it the best open model for coding right now. Minimax M2.1 lands at the eighth position. Now, that might sound lower, but remember, it is scoring above Gemini Flash. For a model that costs $1.20 per million, beating a Google model is pretty cool. So, let's look at the reasoning capabilities. On the non-agentic leaderboard, which measures raw intelligence and logic, GLM 4.7 is sitting at third place. It is above Claude 4.5 Sonnet and GPT 5.2. It is basically nipping at the heels of Opus. Minimax M2.1 is at 12th place. It is comparable to the original Opus or GLM 4.6. It is smart, but it lacks that deep reasoning capability for really complex, multi-step architectural problems. For example, when I gave them the floor plan test, both struggled with the design logic, but GLM at least allowed me to hover over rooms to see names. Minimax made a plan that worked technically, but didn't make much sense layout-wise. So, what is the verdict? If you are a developer looking for a daily driver to help you write complex code, debug nasty errors, or scaffold entire applications like the movie tracker we built, GLM 4.7 is the clear winner. It is robust, it handles context well, and it doesn't choke on the details like inner page routing. It is the best open model you can get your hands on right now. However, if you are building an automated agent that needs to run simple scripts, generate basic UI components, or do tasks that require thousands of iterations where cost is the main bottleneck, Minimax M2.1 is a steal. It is fast, it is incredibly affordable, and for things like the GoTUI calculator or the Minecraft clone, it works really very well, which is pretty affordable if you think about it. You could use Minimax for the bulk of the grunt work and then switch to GLM 4.7 when you need that extra brain power for the complex logic, we have a high-end open model that challenges the proprietary giants and a budget king that makes agentic workflows accessible to everyone. I think I'm going to keep using GLM 4.7 as my main coding assistant in Cursor and Windsurf for now, but I will definitely be keeping an eye on Minimax for my background automation scripts. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.